Guys, it's uh, SLPS Rocks here with a new video for you. Um, this is the Voxelab Aquila S3, not two, but three. And I just wanted to make this video. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any videos about the Voxelab printers. Uh, th this particular model, that is. I will say that I am pleased with the printer so far, having used it for about three months. And I think I have gone through basically everything uh, problem that I could have imagined with this printer. Um, so I'm going to go over the three top problems with this printer and provide you solutions with them so that you're hopefully aware. First thing, couple things to be aware of this printer. You have an optical sensor here and it's a direct drive extruder, okay? Meaning that we're not gonna have the traditional Bowden and a tube and, and so on and so forth. This is good and just off the first print, I was printing uh, PETG carbon fiber and it was the cleanest print I'd ever seen. Honestly, I, I, I was so surprised with how cleanly it was printing it. Um, and then the other thing you need to know, this optical sensor right here, it uh, sometimes when you auto home after you've turned on and off the printer, it will mess up and think that it's actually uh, higher than it really is. So basically what you'll need to do every single time before you print is you'll need to do an automatic leveling. Every time you power on and off the machine, you will need to perform this leveling. And it is tedious, but that way uh, it won't mess up the Z offset. Or if the Z offset is, let's say, let's say from the last time you turned on and off the printer, it's at minus 2.16, okay? Well, the printer is gonna sometimes think that it's at minus 1.16 or at, and then it will come down and when you start printing, immediately it will scratch your build surface here. So I always recommend you start off at Z offset zero, just fresh off of auto leveling and then uh, lower the height to uh, the exact right Z offset you need for the, the print. Another thing you need to be aware of is that uh, you can do the manual uh, leveling with this one. We would recommend you do that before you start auto leveling. You can have this all jagged and on a weird crooked angle, but it's not gonna do you any favor. So make sure that you do indeed do uh, disable the steppers here and, and go through the manual leveling as you would with any uh, old fashioned 3D printer. Uh, you should know also that the um, home offset uh, configuration option is not available on this one. You can't uh, you can't configure home offset. There's no advanced settings you can play around with on this printer. So what you'll have to do is you have to take that into account with uh, Cura, your slicer software. And so if I if I auto home this right here, okay. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that it auto homes. Uh, well, it goes to the center here, but if you were to lower the uh, the the axes. X, Y, and Z to zero, it would actually be somewhere over here, which is off of the build surface. And this is a setting you have to change in Cura. So that's the t top three things to be aware of. No home offset configuration on this. You have to account for the offsets on Cura. And then uh, there's plenty of videos you can look at the S2. They, I won't go into it, but that's about it for the things you should be aware of. Now, some of the bad things, the top three problems with this printer, okay, number one, First and foremost, the uh, ribbon cable right here. So this ribbon cable, as it's directed, it's, a, it's a recommended you route it through the back portion of this and zip tie it. And when you get the printer, it typically exits through the back here. And it's, it's in line with this, uh, this power cable. But the problem with that is that um, while you print, after about two, three months of printing, eventually I printed something uh, and the, uh, the, it, it tugged the ribbon cable and severed the connection. And you can see that it's not just me who has had this problem, but the Ender 3 V2 and uh, the S2 as well, all the Voxelab and Creality printers with a ribbon cable have this problem. So you make sure as soon as you get it out of the box to uh, remove that connection and, and route it through the side here. So what you're seeing here is the result of uh, that severed connection. And what I've done is I had to get some fresh wire. There's 16, uh, 16 cables here, 16 individual wires. And I had to re-solder and extend all 16 connections and another eight for this guy right here because I, I, I also cut this one too. Uh, just to get to this guy, I had to cut this wire. So make sure, guys, that you do absolutely route it through the side here. I've seen some people make a vertical mount for it. You can do that. Um, but so far, like this, hanging off the front has worked well for me. If you extend it far enough, I guess it really shouldn't be a problem. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, as I mentioned, is the lack of uh, sort of settings. I'm hoping that they will update um, on the Vox Lab here. This is the firmware version. I'm hoping in further firmware versions you can up update and upgrade. If Vox Lab is watching this, 
Uh, to add back some of the central features that you'd want for um, especially a higher end printer that can reach 300 degrees Celsius on the nozzle tip, to be able to add the X axis baby step configuration, the Y and the Z baby step. We already have, sorry, the Z offset setting, and that will allow you to, uh, I don't know what it's doing there, sorry, it's my camera, but that will allow you to uh, play around with the, um, the Z offset and get the perfect layer height down on your first layer. And so that is uh, sort of a problem. You'll have sometimes issues with layer shifts or whatever, complicated print scenarios. You definitely wanna be able to adjust that. So I highly recommend that uh, they add that feature back. So that's problem number two. And then problem number three with this printer is, uh, like I said, is that it needs to be auto leveled every single time uh, you turn on and off the printer. Otherwise, you will scratch this lovely PEI surface, and right off the right out of the box, you won't be able to tell which side is actually the PEI. The bottom side is is nothing; it's just metal. But this is the side with the PEI. It's sort of uh, more matted than the steel, shiny steel surface here. So that's the three things to be aware of when you get this printer. Otherwise, it really is a fabulous printer. And the nice thing about the direct drive extruder is that it, it it is a bit more lenient. It prints nicer, I find, than. Uh, the Bowden setups, it's, it's just easier to dial in the settings. And then uh, the it, it has a hole that sort of accommodates uh, for if it's like your filament's a little bit wider or shorter, narrower. And so what you'll have, you, you won't have your, your filament here getting stuck through a, like a Bowden tube, PTFE tube. And so you, what, you, what that will allow you to basically do is if you make your own filament at home where you don't have the same factory tolerances in the filament diameter, well now you have a machine that can actually probably handle materials like polypropylene, polyethylene, made home, recycled plastics. Well, I have yet to try it, but I'm pretty confident that, uh, you know, making your own filament at home, this is probably the perfect ideal printer. And for the price range, it's it's it doesn't get any better. Just be careful, like I said, about that uh, ribbon cable. You can't order another part for that. So that's it for me, guys. Hope that was helpful. Sorry for the long video, but... Uh, if you have any questions, drop down comments. I will maybe make an update, updated video later on at some point uh, regarding this printer. But all in all, don't be shy away. Voxlab does make great printers. I have both Coreality printers and the Voxlab printers here. And uh, what I can tell you is that uh, they are pretty much the same. Honestly, like Voxlab is copying Coreality, but they're pretty they're doing a pretty damn good job. This is your absolute first Voxlab printer. I'll give you one other suggestion, which is the, uh, the V... Uh, the V wheels here, they're called V wheels, V rollers, whatever they're called, sorry. No, don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it's something among those lines. This V V wheels, you have to, it, they have a sort of a slanted, crooked uh, adjustment here, and it's at the uh, bottom, uh, bottom, right there, sorry, there it is. It is the bottom, but it's the, uh, that right there, that center nut between them. You notice the top ones don't have any nut, but that one has an adjusting nut. That nut right there, make sure that that is uh, every, like, you know, three weeks, four weeks, make sure that it's tight uh, and, and sort of set. What happens is that it will loosen over time, and it will cause a wobble. Absolutely want to make sure that uh, this whole entire assembly is nice and tight. It's, there's no play or give in it. Otherwise, you're not going to get that same level of accuracy in your prints. And the same thing with all other Voxelab printers. You can see the C2 right here. Had for two and a half years now. It's been an amazing printer. Really, no issues with it. Um, some things obviously is more my fault, but same thing. You have this. This. Uh, I'm just gonna play around with it. You want to really make sure that that uh, bolt, which is on an angle, is sort of uh, adjusted every now and again. That is the thing that has I found has made the biggest impact on the quality and the accuracy of the print. As I've been able to print some things really fancy with this printer, or just like any other, it's like the Ender 3, right? And it reaches 260 degrees, no no issues with that. Um, so, you know, and it comes with a glass, glass plate, which I really liked. But be wary, guys, that uh, those are like the top three, four things you should know about Voxelab printers in general, but especially the Aquila S3, which has this silly ribbon cable. Um, yeah, that took me a good solid five hours to, to fix up. Well, hopefully you won't have to go through that five hours because you watch this video till the end. So you get extra thumbs up from me and high five. Okay, we're not doing that anymore. It's 2024. Sorry, I'm kind of old fashioned. <laughs>
But uh, yeah, guys, throw your likes, your uh, comments down as always. If you like to subscribe, I keep on updating with more DIY videos from time to time. It's been a while since I posted, but uh, this 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 review video right here will get people started thinking about getting uh, an S3. You, you've basically been told everything you need to know about this machine. And my recommendation, it's a good machine. Get it. Just make sure you watch this video first. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.